Yo, what's up guys? I just want to come on here real quick before the video starts and say I'm sorry for the late upload. I ran into a bunch of technical difficulties with this video, but it is finally uploaded and I hope you enjoy. So in the meantime, let's get to the video. you to comment down below how much power you think I'm gonna make because last time if you remember this is how much power I made that wasn't very much power but regardless comment down below how much power you're gonna think how much power you think I'm gonna make so I don't know if you guys can even hear it or not but it doesn't really matter a lot has changed on the car since the last time I did take it to the dyno. So last time I was on the dyno, um, it was shooting out a bunch of black smoke from the rear, which Adam thought that it could have been burning oil. And on top of that, it couldn't, it just wouldn't make boost. And even though he made it to 19 PSI, it just did not perform how we wanted to. So I went ahead and swapped over to this new VF52 hybrid setup, which was their like kind of, it's Ecotech's hybrid setup that they do. So it basically takes the VF52, which is a six blade design, like most stock turbos, and it's a billet wheel and turns it into a nine blade design. So, which I'm sure you guys can guess, can push a lot more air through the turbo. And yes, it does sound cool. But, with that being said, that is one thing that I fixed. On top of that, I had a major exhaust leak. Both my runners for cylinder one and two were cracked all the way around. So, I put a little bit of my welding skills to use. And uh, for you guys that don't know, I used to be a welder for about a little over a year. And uh, so I went ahead and welded my exhaust back up. And let me tell you, dude, it sounds good as new, man. All my gaskets are fixed, my headers are not leaking, and that was another problem. So there's two major things that were either replaced or fixed that can help us make more power today. It is currently about 75 degrees out. Humidity is pretty low. The sun's not too high in the sky yet, so that's good. I know what my goals are. I'm gonna, I'm, I know what we're shooting for, clearly, but if we don't make that, that's okay. Here's something I don't get to see very often on my morning drive. Nice Evo 10. Nice, it's pretty cool. Sounds good too. But kind of circling back to what I mentioned earlier about what has changed with the car. Before this dyno session, I went ahead and also did my transmission fluid and my rear diff fluid. Um, just so there's brand new fluid in there, can have a less uh, chance of friction and everything to slow the car down. And uh, also went ahead and did an oil change like two days ago. So now that that's also done, hopefully the motor runs good and everything. And everything works as it should. 
I'm really hoping, but uh, it is what it is at this point. We're gonna make whatever we make, and I'm gonna have to deal with that, and I'm just gonna have to get another bigger turbo. <laughs> had a freaking bumper exit. a little bit of turbo whistle now oh yeah as you guys can see we made it to the dyno adam's getting everything set up right now um but another difference i forgot to mention earlier was i put the bronze wheels back on uh the bronze wheels only weigh about 29 pounds which is a pretty it's like between the bronze wheels and the oem wheels it's a good i want to say five or six pound difference in weight even though i have these big tires on them the tires alone only weighed a couple pounds like it wasn't much um, so that really offsets I think it'll help a little bit today but he just said that he mentioned that he did another car with the same setup that I have made about 345 so with that being said gonna see if we can push the car a little bit today it's really nice in the shop so hopefully that helps with um, the cooling system and everything but Car looks good. I wish I would have washed it, but I'll probably wash it later today after I go out and enjoy it a little bit. But hopefully everything works as it's supposed to. Shouldn't have any real major issues anymore. All the oil leaks, I, well, I didn't have any oil leaks. Um, all cooling system problems and everything, cooling's good. So hoping for the best today, keep it our fingers crossed. <laughs> all strapped on he's getting everything set up computer wise and whatnot but super nervous today but also super excited and my mind's kind of jumping all over but you know what we're gonna take it as it comes and uh, hope for the best so we just finished talking about everything so because I had to fix that exhaust leak and because of the new turbo and everything it was starting to run a little bit rich on idle and everything. So we went back to scaling for the injectors where it should be perfect. So now that that's fixed, went ahead and dropped the wastegate duty cycle all the way down. You're gonna start off with a, basically a fresh map and go from there. So this will be the first pull you hear with the new turbo. Let's go. So first runs in the books, basically starting from scratch, making some beautiful numbers, man. Look at that graph. It is just steady, steady, steady. Running pretty rich though, which you can see it's pretty low down there um, on the pole. But overall, it is very smooth. Torque flattens off pretty well, boost goes up. That was strictly on wastegate though. So he hasn't even added any wastegate duty cycle yet. That is strictly like no duty cycle. So seeing that, that's actually pretty impressive for uh, for no wastegate, basically. Also, we were a little bit dumb and uh, forgot to tighten up the straps. So now that those are tight, hopefully shouldn't have any more issues with that. You got a little bit more centered on the dyno as well, but I'm pretty sure. I don't know where it's at. I don't know if I'll even be able to find it. I'm pretty sure there's a nail in my tire. Oh, there it is. Holy shit, look at that sucker. So going off of that last little run he did, so he had wastegate pressure down to zero, 
which held the turbo at about seven pounds and then about 4,400, 4,500 RPM, he started seeing it spike up to 13 and then, then that carried all the way to red line. But what you guys saw on the graph, for seven pounds spiking up to 13, that's pretty impressive. Like I'm not even gonna lie, I think we're gonna be pretty good today according to what we've seen on the graph. I think we're gonna be pretty good and uh, I think everything's gonna work out in our favor. But again, Appreciate him and everything he does for us, for me. see here he's bringing the turbo in and it starts spooling what is that like like just under two three thousand I mean it's like almost 20 2600 rpm it starts going and going and going and then it does start spiking a little bit up top which you can see a little bit he's got to clean up there but he's still at zero wastegate which is where you get this nice flat torque curve and that's where you can see even the torque it's starting to spike a little bit um, 280 torque is uh he's gonna clean that up he's got to start bringing in the wastegate and everything but that is insane revved it all the way out to about 7k it was like 6800 it sounded amazing a few more changes on to another run just a hair but he's starting to clean it up and everything so he's doing his thing it sounds very healthy though building off of that I did go ahead and spray down the intercooler with some water as well starting to you can see where it's starting to creep in so when I hadn't spread off the intercooler again you can only do so much to keep this car cool just because it is still a top mount which some people say top mounts are not for the faint of heart, and personally, I would just want to utilize the hood scoop. It sounds way better. I will say, after fixing the exhaust and everything and all that fun jazz, the car sounds way better, man. Like, it sounds healthy again, it's throaty, and it just sounds like it's hitting its, you know, it's messing, it's going on all cylinders. And, uh, he's still gotta mess with the boost a little bit. He's still turning it up, I think. The last two pulls you saw were at about 13 pounds tapering up to 50 or 12 pounds tapering up to 15 and we're hoping or i'm at least hoping i can maybe see around 20 today um but we'll see obviously with that boost creep issue that's just a problem but it shouldn't be too bad he's he's able to mitigate it and uh, make it work with what he what he's got Carter's running healthy he's got no issues not seeing any knock or any damn drop or anything so gonna keep on keeping on and uh hopefully we can start seeing more but again my goal for today is kind of get over that 330 335 mark if we can get to that we'll be happy should have no other reasons why we can't see close to 340 today um it's a beautiful day out but obviously other factors include heat soak and shit like that so 
we'll just have to roll with the punches as we come but we're getting there we're very close i love to see it because this car is we all know what this car can do and uh i'm excited to not only be able to drive it but be able to know that the car is running to its full potential and uh, i got an amazing tuner behind the computer so here's where we ended up with that last run 327 321 very very good he's getting closer to where he wants to be but you can see here as he comes down through here he did get a little right in this area where you can see the mouse is he did get a little lean if you will it was around like 11.6 so he's got to do a little bit of math scaling right in here through the mid-range but out here at the top, you can see it's 11.4, right at about 65, 6,800 RPM, which is absolutely perfect because he's not too worried about um, having to keep certain things where they are and stuff like that. So awesome. Still definitely seeing a huge improvement over last time. I mean, you can see it's just pulling, 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 pulling. So like max power is right at about 6,400 RPM. So super awesome to see that. This turbo is so freaking loud, man. It just screams, it just wants to go. All right, so with this beautiful curve here, you can see he's kind of looking at it right now. There's a slight little dip right here. He is gonna try and clean that up a little bit and he's got about 350 foot-pounds of torque, which is, that's a, that's a lot of torque for an open, even if it's a built, that's still a lot of torque for an open deck motor. So he's gonna probably take that down to about 338. 340 torque try and get there exactly which is pretty healthy all this fueling looks really good though and uh he's gonna try and see if he can get a little bit more out of it um he's already already we're already almost at the target of what he wants to see which is awesome we already hit over the 330 mark which is uh, that was a personal goal of mine so we did that Woo! so definitely gonna clean it up a little bit clean up the torque drop because it it the G kit, which is what this hybrid setup is in my car. So you can see where it hits very nicely, but then it holds and then starts to taper off. So he's gonna try and make this a little bit more smooth here where it just slowly tapers off. But you can see just how much better the torque carries because there's more airflow. And then it starts to dip. Huge improvements over the little stock VF series that I had and this, uh, new new internals on the turbo but super cool to see that it sounds gnarly and i think we're only targeting it right now at about 18 pounds of boost which is basically exactly where i was at last time and we're already almost 30 horsepower more and about 21 horse uh sorry almost 30 horsepower more and 20 nah, 21 more foot pounds of torque on this map alone now he is going to torque turn the torque down a little bit and he's going to try and give it a little more power but i think by the end of the today should see just under 340 i'm hoping and uh, about 340 335 340 torque is probably realistic considering last time where we actually had some issues where the car just didn't want to make boost i mean he turned it up to i think 19 and it just did not take it and it made 306 and that was kind of like all it had in it so now he's about at the same amount of target boost and it's making that much more horsepower it tells me that yeah the turbo is definitely done so love to see it excited to uh, i'm excited to drive it man that's that's the biggest thing is i'm excited to feel a basically 30 horsepower difference in this car Peaking at about 18 and a half, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring down the cam timing up there at peak boost and see if I can bring down the torque as well. With that, okay. Which should work. Are you still trying to target 19 pounds or no? Oh no, I can't even get there. <laughs> Figures. Uh, so 18 pounds is the dick. Yep. The deal we got. But see, even on 18 pounds, we're making 334 versus that's 30 horsepower more than what we made last time. Quite nice. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. We're doing all right. Um...
All right, so we did go ahead and adjust a few things. That's what we made on the last one, which I don't know if I showed you guys already, but so he's gonna try and bring this about even and then taper off a little bit smoother and he's gonna try and bring that down to about 340 um, even all the way across the board. So it should make the overall power curve a little bit more happy. But end all be all, we'll see what we can do. Should be one of the last pulls we're doing for the day as well. turn it down <laughs> I didn't do it it wasn't me yeah so right here where you see that little there's a little dip there and a little dip there he did say it did knock a little bit but um, that's also at what 6800 rpm all right, so after the last map, you see he is going to do, he's going to try and bring down the torque a little bit, but the power looks in good. So let's break off the intercooler one more time and he's going to full send it. Oh, it sounds so good from back here, man. tapered it down just a little bit which you can see here clean that up clean up the top end and he brought the torque down a lot more than what it was i think it was still at like 346 so he tapered it down even more to about three 343 there you go about 343 which is a little bit better and uh lost a little bit of power but i think he took uh, maybe a degree out of the whole map which brought everything down which is totally fine because you can still see here fueling on the initial hit Fueling goes to 10.9, which is like 11, and then it carries about 11.1 all the way through, which is great target AFRs, especially now that I know previously, which you guys saw in the other video, he had to add about 20% duty cycle on the top end because it just was running super lean. But I think we've also fixed that issue, but you can just tell how much better the, the boost carries when it hits, and it just carries all the way out, and it looks really good definitely a huge gain that's a 30 horsepower gain in power and about a 20 almost a 25 horsepower torque gain that's awesome man all right so i will say we we're both extremely happy with this but if you look at my previous map this is what we were working with look at the gains over the entire map you can see it's just consistently way way better and the power you can see starting here where boost hits and then the power just takes off from the old map so you can just see how much better the this uh, turbo carries but he doesn't like how rough it is up top and i mean it is what it is but he is gonna see because so i also found out these are not oem coil packs so a few years ago whenever i did my coil packs I guess I did not put the uh, OEM back in. I just bought a cheap version off of eBay. They came in a Denso box, but I guess they're not actual Denzos. They're some AIP, Japanese, Chinese, something. They're not very good. They're great, they've been doing the thing. But because they're a black top, um, a black ignition coil, they have a black, black marking on it like this. They reduce, they require a, a lighter dwell. He's gonna actually try taking dwell out of the coil packs and seeing if that actually cleans up the roughness that you kind of see in here and here. Should smooth it out because you can see in here, this map is super smooth. But he's gonna see if that'll clean it up a little bit. And if that being the case, that they want a lighter dwell, um, it could also be a little bit of an increase in power possibly because they're not being strained as much. I doubt that's what's gonna happen, but I think all in all, it should help just clean this up. 
and that's what we're kind of going for here. All right, so I didn't actually record that last run, but the low end was much less happy, was way less happy um, with rowing that lower dwell number, but the top end loved it. So he's actually gonna run the kind of like a bottleneck or a hybrid setup where it loves a high amount of dwell from the coils down low, but then tapering into a much lower number up top, just so the overall curve is happier and the car is happier itself. But we might actually gain a little bit more horsepower from that. And we're also, it's 98 degrees in the shop right now. So even seeing, what is it? Three, 334 in the actual dyno room is amazing, but I'll probably actually be closer to around 343 344 so about 10 horsepower difference actually on the street with fresh airflow and everything flown over the fins and in the day intake which that's about a pretty much normal amount you'll see about an 8 to 10 horsepower difference when you're actually on the street so it's safe to say that i'm gonna have a 350 horsepower subaru uh by the time we leave here today man that's pretty awesome giving the information that we have we found out that i think the coil packs are going to be our main issue because there was way less smoke on that run um, that we saw, which a lot of times that's what we were running into was there's just a bunch of smoke coming out the back and it still runs healthy. There was no knock registered, but it's just the fact that you can see out of the exhaust pipe that it's, it's like a very faint misfire, if you will, but it's not registering one, so it's not big enough. But so I'm probably gonna look into getting some new coil packs and a three port boost controller because he's starting to run into some spike issues, which no big deal there. It'll help him be able to regulate boost better, but um, so far, definitely need to start running one step colder plugs as well. Keep those gapped about 0 0.026, 0 0.028, whichever they come, which is the normal amount for Subarus. And uh, one step colder plugs, get better ignition coils and a three port boost controller and be back here for another revision and hopefully can make a little bit more power. But last run's going in the books and whatever it makes or whatever it makes. God, my poor car is so dirty. So you can see it's kind of putting them all together and kind of getting the best gauge of where we're at here. Seeing which run he was happiest with and all that fun stuff, but that is where we're gonna to end today. 331 at 338 and on the street, I can see about an eight to 10 horsepower difference. So we'll just say 341 at 348, uh, 340 torque. That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful improvement from where I was at before and I, I am ecstatic with that. That is awesome, man. And that was our goal for the day and we did it. We did the thing, car held together great, but definitely gotta get the ignition coils cause this little dip there that you guys quick saw, but once we get that fixed, the ignition coils and everything, and I'm probably gonna end up doing the one step pull the plugs. I mean, I'm probably guaranteed to gain another five horsepower from plugs and coils just because it'll run better and then i'll be at 345 and this thing will be moving but from where we were last time to see where we're at today is a huge difference and definitely a huge heartwarming uh situation just because i know that this car is actually capable of and the fact that it finally did it and gotta give them a little patsy All right, well guys, there you have it. I officially now have a 340 horsepower Subaru WRX STI hybrid, and I love it, man. I just stalled it. Warm clutch problems. But, well, I'm gonna go drive it around a little bit and see how she feels, but uh, overall, super super happy with it man it did the thing i made my number goal for the day and uh i couldn't be happier honestly super super happy with how everything turned out today
but uh, I'll try and get you guys some POVs, but uh, it'll be kind of hard since I kind of need both hands to drive. But we'll make it work, but this thing is a freaking rocket ship. It is so freaking smooth getting the boost and it just it just holds you back and when you shift it's just right there again it's the spool time in this turbo is ridiculous i mean we were going through the through the dyno sessions and adam was like dude this turbo spools like four or five hundred rpm faster than the old vf 52 did and uh i did look it up it is the vf g25 um internal kit now so it's a little bit different but with that being said um it, it's definitely what if anyone doesn't really want to go big turbo but wants definitely to push more power out of their car out of their turbo and their turbo is getting a little old do this swap kit it's it's called the vf g25 and it just replaces the internals of the turbo with the billet wheel and uh, all the bearings and everything i guess and the journal bearing and everything i don't really know all I, i'm I'm going to be totally honest. I don't really know all the interworkings of it. I just know kind of what I was told. So it basically just replaced everything in the turbo. So far, I'm in love with it. It runs great. It sounds great. The, tur the turbo just has that nice whistle to it. And the car makes all the right noises. So I'm going to go inside, get changed, and uh, get ready for the evening. 